Hi, this is Craig Calvert. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about sharpening your image. So I'll start out by saying that there are already a number of techniques in PixInsight to sharpen an image. So why am I creating another one? I've used several of these techniques, and at least for me, I just don't find them very intuitive. For example, multi-scale linear transform. So you have to assign bias values to layers. And I don't even know what the layers are, and nor do I know what bias values to assign. So I pretty much rely on trial and error to come to a solution. This technique to me is much more intuitive. It's certainly more visual. It helped me understand what I'm actually doing when I'm sharpening, and it works. Let me demonstrate this technique, and I'm going to do it using this uh, image of the Crab Nebula. So this image is obviously starless, it's obviously been stretched, and it's also had its noise reduced. Now, you can add the stars back again at the end of the process. So this technique uses extracted wavelet layers to sharpen the image. So what is a wavelet layer? The best way to explain what these layers are is to show you what they are, which I'm going to do. And when you're looking at these layers, I want you to look for two characteristics. One is their scale. Is, are they, do they represent coarse scale or fine scale features? The second is the contrast. Uh, are they very contrasting or are they very subtle? Can, do the features pop out at you or can you hardly see them? Um, so those are two very important characteristics I want you to look for. So let's, uh, let's extract some layers. So under scripts, image analysis, there's a script called extract wavelet layers. So the target image is my image. The number of layers uh, you select and you check this box if you want to also look at the residual. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go, plus the residual. The residual is what remains after you extract all these other layers. So, so the residual contains all of the scales that are coarser than the coarsest layer that you extracted. And if you look at these individual layers, this is layer 5, it's the coarsest, and 4, it's a little more, a little less coarse, more fine, getting finer and finer until, and that's the finest. And, but it's kind of interesting when you look at this because you almost see nothing. And, and that's the other point, or the other characteristic that's important, is how much information is present in each one of these layers, how much variance, how much contrast, and as you can see, as we're getting coarser, we're getting more information. It's getting more contrasting, and, and in fact, the most information is in the residual. Now, not all this information, or this contrast, is necessarily signal. Some of it is noise, and in fact, you'll find that, in general, the most noise is in the finest scales, and as you get to the coarser scales, you reduce the noise. You increase the signal, and therefore you increase, obviously, the signal-to-noise ratio. So I'm going to show you um, a technique that, where you can measure signal-to-noise and noise, so that you can see that, at least in this case, and in many cases, the finer scales have more noise and less signal, and the coarser scales have more signal and less noise. So let's, uh, let's just take a look at two of these. Let's look at just these two, this one and this one. All right, and let's measure their signal to noise ratio and also measure their noise, just to compare. So let's go up here to script and image analysis and signal to noise ratio. I'm doing this one first. And you can see these numbers, it's, the signal to noise is about 60, 58, and 56. Those are RGB. This is, these are RGB images. What's this one? You think it's gonna be higher or lower signal to noise ratio? Well, it looks like there's more signal, right? Um, so image analysis, signal noise ratio, see what it does. Okay, these are in the hundreds, 664, 605, 567. They're much higher. What is something like, oh, the residual? If I can get it, if I can find it again, it's back here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, the residual. Let's look at it. Image analysis, signal noise ratio, and it's thinking because it can't do it. So we're talking now 10 to the 8th power. 10 to the 8th? 10 to the 6th is a million. 10 million. 100 million? So the signal in here is 
m obviously magnitudes more than the signal in here. What about the noise? So again, you go to image analysis, and there's a script called noise evaluation. About 1.2, 1.3, right? Noise, that doesn't seem like much. What's the noise on this one? Talking around 0 0.34, 37, 345. What's the noise on this one? It's going to estimate it. So again, it's image analysis, uh, noise evaluation. 10 to the minus 4. So this, this layer, the finest scale layer that it extracted, has very little signal and a lot more noise than any other layer. You can't even see the signal. So what I call this layer, my, this is my term, is a trash layer or a garbage layer. So as a pre-processing step, I want to subtract this garbage layer from the original layer. But how do I do that? Maybe you can just subtract it out using pixel math. Processed image minus layer 001. So processed image minus, eh, here we are, that one. Okay, all right, so now, do you think it'll work? Okay, the bets are on. Well, that didn't work. And the reason is that you just can't add and subtract these layers with pixel math. So if I can't add and subtract these individual layers, um, what technique can I use to remove this trash layer from the original image. It's actually quite simple. In fact, you've already seen the process. You're going to do it through layer extraction. Script, image analysis, extract wave of layers, extract that one layer. Two, one, done. There is the garbage layer, goodbye. So what's left is the original image minus the garbage layer. So for the rest of this video, this is the image that I'm going to be using. Let's move this to another workspace. So I'm going to start this sharpening process by extracting some layers. In this case, I'm going to extract five layers. Okay, I extract all five. And let's go, that's your residual. And then you have your coarser scale layers like this one. And that one. And then there's some more of an intermediate scale, and then your finer scale layers like that and that. So my objective here is to use these layers, both the coarser scales and the finer scales, to sharpen the image. So how exactly do I go about doing that? So the first thing I need to do is define what I mean by coarse scale and finer scale. I'll start with the finer scales. These three uh, finest layers, finest scale layers, I'm going to call my fine scale layers. And the two coarsest scale layers, I'm going to call my coarse scale layers. And of course, I also have my residual. So let's get rid of these for now. Notice how I decided what was fine and coarse. It was strictly visual. I just made the choice. Okay, so let's go to script, and I'm gonna, then under image analysis, I'm gonna extract uh, three, right? That's the finer scales. Three layers plus the residual. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm gonna need that residual. I don't need these. I'm not going to use them because you already know I can't add and subtract these into this and make any kind of a difference. It'll mess it up. So goodbye. I don't need you. I'm going to use you instead. But I'm going to also do it another one. I'm going to do another one. And this one just is to include those coarser scales as well. So um, extract wavelet layers. This one I'm going to do five. And one, two, three, four, five. That's my residual. I'm going to keep it. And this one then includes this and this, which this one doesn't have, both of them have these three in common. Removed. They're removed. I'm going to use pixel math to process these residuals. 
Now, I told you you can't use it to process the individual layers, but you can to process the residuals. So under process, let's get up pixel math and clear that. And so I'm going to take this residual one as my starting point and let's find it. Residual one. And I'm, I'm going to subtract from it. This one is, but this is residual two, which is the so minus residual two, which is the finer scales, right? Removed. Residual two have the residual two has the finer scales removed. Okay. Now, if I subtract these two, residual one minus residual two, um, what am I going to get? I'm going to get those finer scales, right? Um, let's uh, go ahead and try. I'm not even going to name it because you'll see why. Um, not exactly. We get nothing. We get blackness. And the reason is, is because, if you look at residual two, it, it's most of all the energy, most of all the information that is in here is also in here. Uh, the, 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 and so it's like subtracting one from one to get almost one to get zero. So we're not going to do that. We are going to put coefficients on these things. And I'm just going to try a couple right now. Four times this minus three times this. And I'll tell you what these coefficients mean. Okay. First, four minus three equals what? One. Two minus one equals one. Seven minus six equals one. The numbers always have to sum to one. Uh, that's rule number one. Rule number two is the higher these, bigger these numbers are, like four minus three versus say six minus five. Six minus five will have a greater effect. It'll accentuate these finer scales more than four minus three does. Uh, and so well, how does this work? Well, this, what this has in it, that this has in it that this one does not are those finer scales. So it's simple math. Four times coarse plus fine minus three times coarse equals what? Equals four times fine plus one times coarse, which means you emphasize the fine scale features. So let's, um, let, let's create it and we'll see what happens. There it is. All right, now let's compare. I think you can see that I've definitely sharpened it up. And I've sharpened up a lot of the finer scale detail. Maybe you look at it and say, that's too sharp. Um, I, don't, I don't want it that sharp. So what do I do? Three minus two, All right? Just lower these numbers somewhat. So mathematically now it's three fine and one coarse. And look at it. So um, it's also sharper than that, but it's not quite to that degree. See that? So there you go. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's with the residual two. Now with residual three, this one here I also had, if I can put it over here, this one here is had the even coarser scales removed. So what do you think is going to happen if I do this same thing, except I change this to residual three? Okay, so that's three of those minus two of those. And then I'll make this a three. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, think it's going to look good? Ooh. Notice how coarse it is, like way too coarse. And remember what I said, there's more information, more signal, more energy in those coarser scales. You don't need to quite have these coefficients as high when you want to represent these coarser scales. You need to bring them down. Um, so let's try, get rid of that. Let's try a two and a one for the coarser scales. All right, and also um, this is one instead of two, so I can keep things straight. One, R2, R3 rather, and let her go. There, that's better. It still may be kind of coarse, but it's kind of intense. But you can see a coarse scale, fine scale, very different from this. Now, here's something else you can do. Let's say you say, oh, that's nice with the core scales. It really captured them. 
Um, but this one didn't capture enough coarse scale. This one didn't capture enough fine scale. So there's something else you can try. And that is to kind of mix and match. So what I'm going to do now in the expression editor, and I'm going to go 50%. I'm going to start with 50%. So 0 0.50 times uh, 1R3, which is this one, plus 0 0.5. 50 times uh, 2 R2 and so this is a 50-50 combination so I just call this um, com combo 50-50 <laughs> uh, uh, 50 all right and let's see what happens and there you go so this one here um, and definitely have more fine scales than this and I think this is accentuated a little more than that but you know I say okay I want a little more of this coarser scale in on this so let's change it since R3 is the coarse scale make that 60 and whoops and 40 and so I'll do 60 40 down here so I can keep track of things and let it go. There you go. So that's a 50-50 combination. This is a 60-40, a little bit more in the coarser scales. Okay, so let's say I like that. I'm going to iconize all of these and I'm going to go and I don't need this and I'm going to compare where I started and where I finished. Um, so I think, again, this is just another tool in the toolbox. It's kind of, I like it because it's very visual. And because you can see these things, you can see these different um, uh, layers, visualize them. To me, it's a little more intuitive. I can make my choices better than I say came with multi-scale linear transform. And uh, so I like it. Now, that's not fine for, the, for M1. Let's look at another example quickly. All right, and this is, oh, the Whirlpool Galaxy. So we did a, a small planetary nebula. Now I'm looking at a galaxy, and there it is. Again, I did the same kind of processing as I did previously. And guess what? This one had a trash layer. Yeah, just like the other one did, so I removed it. And actually, this is what I started with. I removed it, and now that's my residual without the trash layer. Um, and so I tried to experiment with different, different uh, layer extractions. So I extracted two layers, and this is the residual for two layer extraction. Doesn't look a lot different, but it doesn't have the two very finest scales. And I also tried one with five, and wow, it, so a lot of the coarser scale information has been removed. So then I go through the same process. Um, and, and I played around with it a little bit, and I find out that um, in this case, this is, um, uh, I took four of these minus three of those to get this. Um, and, it, and I think you can see maybe there's a little more continuity here, a little more, a little more of the finer skills of information have sharpened up a bit. And then I took, and I went and took this, and I subtracted to 1.75 times this minus 0.75 times this. And again, that was a little bit of trial and error to get that point. And I ended up with this. So that is definitely pulling out the coarser scale, these very continuous features. And so I might want to, again, make a combination of the two. And I did. This one happens to be a 50-50 combination. This, half this, half this. So that's what I start with. That's what I end with. It's not a big, big, big effect, but I think you can see I, there's more. I can see some of this character, and I can definitely see some more of this continuity in these features than I could in the original. So after I, uh, I made my video, I decided to add one more example. And of course, this is Jupiter. The image here on the left is the 
uh, called my raw image that um, was the result of the rotation and the stacking of the AVI. The image on the right is uh, what I was able to do with this image uh, using this technique. In this case, I used three different uh, scales. So a fair question to ask is, you know, why didn't I just use the wavelet sharpening process in Registax? So I did. I brought the raw image into Registax and to the best of my ability, I sharpened that image and this is what I got. I think the two sharpened images are at least somewhat comparable. So the next question I ask is, can I take this sharpened image that I got from Registax and sharpen it even further using this technique? And this is the result. So you be the judge. Um, anyway, I'm not going to show any more examples. I uh, hope, hope this was understandable. I mean, talking about wavelets and layers and all this stuff is not easy. But, you know, give it a try. Um, tinker around with a little bit. I find that tinkering around, if that's a good word, tinkering around with some of these techniques in Pixinsight is the best way to learn them. So I hope you try it and find it useful. Appreciate you watching the video and take care.